uh, it's cold, like really cold, like negative 45 degrees cold. Anyway, Antarctica looks like this. It's big, bigger than the United States. The place is its own continent. Some people think the only animals that live here are penguins. And even though they're the only warm-blooded animal to stay in Antarctica all winter long, they aren't the only animal. Speaking of winter, what is winter like in Antarctica? Well, first of all, Antarctica has a temporary human population of 5,000. But for some reason, 50% of them seem to leave during the Antarctic winters. Don't know why. So I was going to pop out for a walk, but um, I might change my mind. Oh my god, bro. Oh, which are from March to October, gets colder. Gets so cold that the average temperature is negative 60 degrees. Who in the right mind would want to live here? Not me. So I'm out. But to answer that question of who would want to live here, we have to go back into history. <laughs> You see, the British were the first important people in the 1900s to wash up on Antarctica's shores. They looked at this vast array of snowy deserts and said, They scaled the notion down and claimed the coastal spots seen here. Next, France came, and they claimed this little chunk. Next, Norway came, and they, say, and they said, Look at this fine land. I want to live here. And they claimed this huge chunk. Soon, the Nazis came. And in 1938, they grabbed this little piece. Next, in Arge Argentina and Chile came. And they saw the United Kingdom's claims and said, You know what? I want this spot, knowing it was already occupied. The United Kingdom could have responded, but they were a little busy doing... The fate of Holland and Belgium, Czechoslovakia and Austria, will be decided by the dass die deutsche Streitkräfte das Staatsgebiet folgender unabhängiger Nationen nicht angreifen und er nennt Finnland, Lettland, Litauen, Estland, Norwegen, Schweden, Dänemark, Niederlande, Belgien, Großbritannien, Irland, Frankreich, Portugal, Spanien, die Schweiz, Liechtenstein, Luxemburg, Polen, Ungarn, Rumänien, Jugoslawien, Russland, Bulgarien, Türkei, Irland, Arabien, then some of the UK's claims went to its now independent colonies, Australia and New Zealand. Soon, World War II wrapped up, and now we have a Cold War. Now a bunch of other countries want to explore Antarctica for research purposes, mining, and other purposes, as it's pretty isolated land. Great to test some explosives, chemicals, you name it. So the United States and the Soviet Union show up and they're like, We claim this, but not right now, but we have the right to claim it later, you know, you know. And no one wanted to fight over their claims, and definitely after a world war. So they all calmed down, and President D. Eisenhower of the United States invited rep representatives from a bunch of countries to a Washington conference, it was like, boys, boys, let's calm down here and be civil about this. How about we all sign this here treaty, use this place for scientific purposes, you know? The conference lasted from October 15th, 1959 to December 1st, 1959. And once it was over, these 12 countries, Argentina, Australia, Belgium, Chile, France, Japan, New Zealand, Norway, South Africa, and the United Kingdom, Walked out, of the Washi walked out of Washington with this document. This document was the Antarctic Treaty.
and Arctic Tree live. It should take us about 45 minutes. This will be really enjoyable, chat. Starting from the start to finish. Okay. Antarctica shall be used for peaceful purposes only. It's interesting, guys. So let's keep reading. You ready? Okay. Part one. Antarctica should be used for peaceful purposes. Freedom of scientific. Oh. Scientific investigation in Antarctica. Cooperation towards that end shall continue. Scientific observations and. Oh, this is so boring. Observation results. Basically, this medium sized document says Antarctica can only be used for peaceful research purposes, meaning no mining, no explosions, only research like this cute penguin video. This basically turned all of Antarctica into a huge nature preserve. 28 countries showed up to the meeting, but only 12 actually signed the document. With all that said, who owns Antarctica? Well, the treaty froze everyone's claims, so they didn't really matter anymore. But certain countries didn't really like that and tried to do more to legitimize their claims to secure what could be under there. Who knows? Maybe one day they might find oil under the ice. Hence, countries like New Zealand tried to map the area to legitimize claims. The Soviets tried to name certain areas to legitimize claims. Flying tourists, flying researchers, build stuff like nuclear plants, blow up hydrogen bombs like the UK tried to do. But no one does more than Argentina. Brody, you do not own this part of Antarctica. Oh, really? It's a boy. Hooray! What's his name? Since he's now the first Argentinian to be born in Antarctica in 1978, I'm going to name him Emilio. Wait, he's saying his first words. Mother, how dare you manipulate me as if I were paraphernalia for a political gain procurance so that all my existence I'll be observed upon by the common man as a major object, a budgeting chip to a country I do not belong. Mother, I am not of this world sent by God as a pristine being of purity and holiness. Witness God's power as I weld into the shape of the Father and soon upon the completion of my mission will bring chaos to this world and finally enact. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Ba -ba -ba. But overall, everyone really wanted to find one substance. One black, sticky, gooey substance. Oil. New Zealand surveyed the land within their claims to try to find oil, but they didn't find any. The United States tried to drill some holes to find some, they didn't find any. And then in the 1800s and 90s, they sent more ships, but they still couldn't find any. No one could find any oil, but they could find a lot of metals. They found silver, iron, gold, copper, cobalt, chromium, zinc, nickel, and even uranium in Antarctica. They were looking so hard that the treaty doubled, nearly tripled in signatures by other countries. Everyone wanted a piece of Antarctican metals, minerals and possibly even oil. But even if they did find any, who would get to profit off of it? I'm escaping to the one place that hasn't been corrupted by capitalism. Space! Countries like New Zealand lobbied for finders keepers rights, while smaller third world countries thought the wealth should be distributed to those who need it. Did someone say redistribution? So in 1988, everyone came back to discuss making a change to the treaty. You see, the treaty said no mining, but with all this wealth in Antarctica, maybe we should allow a little bit of mining. So all the countries came together for the Convention on the Regulation of Antarctic 
mineral resource activities. It implemented rules on how to share wealth between the companies who would mine it and the countries who that laid claim on the land that it was in. But all these green activists who wanted peace and stability in Antarctica to not exploit its resources for profit said, no, no, no. So the Madrid Protocol was implemented that banned mining altogether. So if you want to know who owns Antarctica, well, everyone. We won't have to worry about changes to the treaty until 2040, when everyone meets again to discuss the parameters of the no mining part of the treaty. But since there isn't anything valuable to mine in Antarctica, we won't have to worry. Right? Yo, boss, we just found 500 billion barrels of oil. Oh, you mean olive oil? That's an interesting discovery. No, the, the black sticky, uh, black oil stuff. We're cooked, bro. What do you mean, boss? We're going to be rich. <laughs> In Antarctica. Lots of it. It's like 1.40 a.m. and I have to go to school tomorrow, so let me make this fast. This Russian company called Rostio, in the past, like, a week or two, just found 500 billion barrels of oil. Billion. With me. That's more than half of, and of all the oil in the Middle East. Do you know what this means? That's around $50 trillion of oil. Right here. In Antarctica. What Russia did was pretty much illegal to the Antarctica Treaty because the company who founded it was a government-owned company showing that Russia was doing the surveying for oil for mining purposes and not research. Russia had made a plan for 2030 to observe Antarctica structure such as the thickness of the sedimentary layer, meaning the layer you mined under the ice. So how did Russia make this discovery without getting flamed? See, they disguise their work as research to make this huge discovery. But does this mean Antarctica is about to get turned into a massive operation to harvest oil, like was done in the Middle East? Maybe. But then again, we don't even know if these are 500 billion barrels of oil that we can just pull out the ground. You see, Rostio surveyed Antarctica to find this oil, but they didn't actually drill into Antarctica to touch the oil. All they did is confirm that it's down in Antarctica somewhere. What this means is that we don't know if all the oil is usable. It could be way too deep under cap rock to even be mined. We don't even know. The area of Antarctica that's actually exposed for mining is about the size of Colorado, while the rest of it being bigger than the whole United States is unminable. Not to mention, if we even did start trying to mine it, Antarctica is a wasteland of freezing cold temperatures. And it moves. Antarctica is always moving. It's ice at about 20 meters a year towards the center or outwards. That's not a lot. But the coast where much of the mineable area is moves 1,500 meters a year. That's 16 football fields. What this means is the cost of setting up an oil mining operation which includes circumventing the Antarctic Treaty, meaning tons of lobbying and smuggling, just doesn't outweigh the revenue from oil in Antarctica. Realistically, this Antarctic oil would need to be selling at $200 a barrel, which is way too much when you can get some oil from the Saudis for $20 or less. So what does this mean for Antarctica? Well, we don't know, so stick around and find out. This is Preston speaking. Thanks for watching.